<laughs> we're going to go ahead and and uh, um, open up the uh, the hearing on um, uh, Senate Joint Memorial eight zero zero six, and uh, we'll begin with the staff presentation, and then we'll hear from Senator Hasegawa. All right, thank you again, Mr. Chair. Again, this is Corey. Uh, San, uh, Senate Joint Memorial 8006 relates to the creation of a national infrastructure bank. Uh, by way of background, the National Infrastructure Bank Act of 2021 is a bill that was introduced in the United States House of Representatives on May 19th of 2021. And the bill would create a national infrastructure bank to facilitate long-term financing of infrastructure projects throughout the nation. To be eligible for a loan, a project is required to have a public sponsor as well as local, regional, or national significance. A project that receives a loan is required to pay all laborers and mechanics locally prevailing wages and to use only certain nationally produced construction materials unless those requirements are otherwise waived by the bank. The bill provides the following with regard to establishing and operating the bank. First, the bank is established as a government corporation exempt from tax. Second, contributions to the bank are designated as charitable contributions. Third, the bank is required to apply for a national bank charter and once chartered, must accept deposits from individuals, corporations, and entities and pay interest on those deposits. And fourth, the bank is required to facilitate the organization of at least seven regional economic accelerators planning groups to, among other things, identify infrastructure needs and priorities. The bill also imposes certain reporting requirements back to Congress about the, um, uh, about the agreements made by the bank. Uh, Senate Joint Memorial 8006 requests that the United States Congress pass and the President of the United States sign the National Infrastructure Bank Act of 2021 or other similar legislation. Happy to answer any questions. Are there questions of staff by members of the committee? Seeing none. Senator Hasegawa, nice to have you back. Chair Kirby, nice to be back. Uh, twice in front of your committee this session, and neither of them has to do with the state banks. So I've you should be impressed by my progress here. <laughs> At any rate. Um, Bob Hasegawa, Senator for the 11th Legislative District. Thank you, uh, Chair Kirby and members of the committee. Uh, the National Infrastructure Bank is a concept that is built on past practice. That is, uh, the United States used to have a public bank that was started actually under the Hoover administration uh, but was used by FDR and he called it, it was called the Reconstruction Finance Corporation. And that was the financial capacity that FDR had to fund the New Deal and uh, to get us through World War II, because obviously we needed to have financing capacity and a public bank is the only real way that we could develop sufficient capacity to, to win those efforts. Uh, against the depression and uh, the war. So this bill, uh, there's a bill in Congress, House Resolution 3339, which is creates the National Infrastructure Bank. Uh, that's been on the books now for two years, I believe it is. And uh, this would provide $5 trillion worth of lending capacity without uh, public investment or appropriation because the financing scheme, the capitalization scheme, it will be the same as they used back for the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, which is to um, purchase um, treasury notes and pay a slightly larger dividend on those to finance the Reconstruction or the National Infrastructure Bank instead. And they think that uh, with the uh, profits that will be made from the loans that the National Infrastructure Bank makes, we'll be able to easily pay off, uh, pay those bonds uh, that they're reselling in exchange for the treasury notes. So what we have is a real infrastructure financing crisis right now. You see that the American Society of Civil Engineers has graded the United States as a whole, something like a C minus or a D. Washington State here is similarly 
upgraded. And it's because we just don't have the capacity to fund the infrastructure to maintain it, let alone to think about building new infrastructure like high-speed rail or sufficient numbers of schools so that uh, uh, students all have comfortable places to um, learn in or housing, public housing has gone by the wayside because we just can't afford to do it anymore. So our supply is falling way short, which is driving our housing costs way up. And there's so many things that we need public financing capacity for. So this bill, uh, that uh, the bill in Congress would be able to give us that finance capacity and $5 trillion worth of lending capacity and the state share of that you know, would create literally millions of jobs and they would be family wage jobs. So um, I'm hoping that you will take it under your consideration. Even my um, chair, uh, Chair Mullet, supports this bill. So that should speak well for the effort. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about it. And um, otherwise, I appreciate your time. Are there questions of the prime sponsor by members of the committee? Seeing none. Thank none. you, Senator. Thank <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Huh? And we will now go into the public hearing on um, Senate Joint Memorial 8006. So, uh, and we've had uh, the staff presentation. We've had the prime sponsor. So we can get right into um, the uh, um to the public testimony. So, Linda, go right ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name's Linda Tosti Lane, and I'm the legislative co coordinator for the Washington State National Organization for Women. Thank you, Chair Kirby, and members of the committee for allowing me to speak today. I'm here today to ask you to pass Senate Joint Memorial 8006 on the National Infrastructure Bank Act out of committee and onto the rules so that the House membership can pass this resolution and send it to Congress. Much of our country's and state's infrastructure has fallen into disrepair. Many communities lack housing, workable transportation networks, clean, safe, and sustainable water, and food production networks. For example, in the area of transportation, many low-income women and their families struggle to find reliable transportation which can affect their health, resulting in missed appointments and poor illness management, even if care is readily available, as well as access to resources for healthy food. The new bank would also create tens of millions of high-paying jobs, train our youth with skills they could use for a lifetime and left many of our disadvantaged persons out of poverty and despair. Additional jobs mean more tax revenue for our cities, counties, and state and improve the lives of those in our communities. A National Infrastructure Bank is a win-win for our state and local communities, providing reduced cost financial instruments for our local and state government's infrastructure projects and a better quality of life for all of Washington State's residents, including women and children. Thank you for your time. And thank you for modeling good time management. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Forchek, please go right ahead. Thank you so much. Good afternoon uh, to the members of the committee. My name is Stanley Forzik. I'm a retired executive from Amtrak. I was the first uh, director of finance uh, for Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. Uh, I am also right now the um, uh, on the advisory board for the Coalition for National Infrastructure Bank. I think the Senator and, and Linda have done a really great job in providing you a thumbnail sketch of everything that the bank will do. And the bank is more than the bank. It's actually a dynamic platform that will extend itself beyond just banking. And I want you to bear that in mind as you review everything. The one thing that I want to say, and I think it's the most critical thing out there, we live in very strange times in the United States these days. I don't know if you if you follow everything, but there seems to be a ball of confusion as to what's going on. Senator Hayakawa did mention the fact that we have a problem with infrastructure. That problem has been going on for a long time. He mentions the last National Infrastructure Bank, which ended in 1957. We haven't done anything since then. 
I want you to really think about the platform. I want you to think about uh, uh, the memorial. And I want to just tell you, there will not be one United States citizen that is not affected by this bill because people are being put to back to work. We're going to supercharge the economy. So there will not be one person that will not, that will not be affected by this this uh, uh, bill, this legislation, and this bank. Thanks so much for your time. I urge you to discuss this further in, in your committees and pass this legislation. Thank you so much. And thank you. And uh, uh, I prefer that we not discuss it anymore. Okay, there, I did it. Um, Okay. All right. So um, let's see, Martin. I see you there. Um, you're first. You're next on my uh, on my screen. So go right ahead. Thank you very much, Representative Kirby and Ranking Member Vic. Uh, my name is Martin Tallarico, and I am a constituent of the 34th Legislative District. I am also a member of the advisory board for the National Infrastructure Bank here in Washington. And I'm a member of the Issues Advocacy for Seattle Indivisible. And I'm also a founding member and treasurer for the newly formed 5013C, the Washingtonians for Public Banking. Both the, both the Washington Pub for Public Banking and the Seattle Indivisible also endorse the NIB. One of the things I'd like to say, a couple of things in support of the NIB, is that not only will it offer low interest, low cost, uh, and long-term loans uh, for municipalities and institutions to, borrow, to use to, borrow, to uh, as, as it means to borrow, but once it's up and running, it will also be able to, prov to provide a grant program for communities that couldn't even afford long-term or low-interest loans. Another really strong selling point that it, that is that it has a Buy American provision. I think both of these things, the, the, this increased lending uh, and, and the Buy American program would jumpstart our national economy. And I think if the US Congress were to pass, and I certainly hope Washington endorses this and asks, asks the US Congress to support it I, believe it, I believe it would be a windfall for Americans and really make great strides for trying to bridge the gap in this country um, and, and form a more national uh, unity of Americans. Please pass this uh, resolution, bring it to the Rules Committee, and thank you for your time, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're all doing great with time. That makes the chairman very happy. Uh, Linda, go right ahead. Good afternoon, Chair Kirby and members of the committee, and happy President's Day. Thank you so much for being present and having this hearing today. We do appreciate it. I would like you to consider to do a pro vote for 8006. And I'm so happy that no one is speaking in opposition because this is a great bill. It facilitates long-term financing with the big difference of no sunset clause. So the money will never run out. I, um, I'm sorry, I should introduce myself. My name is Linda Jenkins. I'm a precinct committee officer for King County. I am also um, the chair of the 45th Legislative District, but I will be redistricted out, so I'm on my way out of there. But I see that this was going to help a lot, this bill and the pro vote. It helps the workers re-entering the workforce and probably not coming, some are not going to come back. And particularly for those workers that don't have a college degree, it will get them going. And it sets up a massive need for career change, which is something that we're going to have to look to because of the way that our economy is going and the way and the good ways that the country is moving forward. Um, it plays a finance projects that creates millions of new great paying jobs and provides workers with um, certified trainings. And I just wanted to also speak as a mother and a grandmother. This is for the future of our citizens and people living in Washington. It gives them a leg up because the money does not run out. And I would really like all of you to vote a pro yes for this bill. Thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me to speak. Okay, thank you. So let's move on. And I am going to more skillfully move to, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a screen over there that I'm looking at that's got the list of everybody signed in. 
and it's at a funny angle. And I passed up somebody, but I'm coming right back. Here we are. So uh, we'll now hear from, and I'm going to um, commit a crime here. I'm going to murder somebody's name, but um, I I got the uh, Alfeca, and it's um, Matardi, maybe. And so we'll try that, and she will correct me. Um, so please go right ahead. And I'm thank sorry you very that I much. Skipped, your, skipped over you earlier. No problem. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the committee. My name is Alfeka Mutardi, and you pronounced it just right. I'm a macroeconomist. I worked for 25 years at the International Monetary Fund. Now I'm the lead economist on this proposal for a national infrastructure bank in, in support of uh, your resolution, uh, SJM 8006, that will ask members of Congress to create a national infrastructure bank. So from an, as an economist, I can tell you the reason we need this bank is we are simply not able in America to finance infrastructure either through our federal budget or through state and local budgets. Proof of the pudding is our spending has fallen way off over time since the last time we had a national infrastructure bank back in the days of the Great Depression and winning World War II. Uh, this bank will be large enough to cover everything. It is five trillion large, so it will cover all of the big ticket items that we've really backed up an accumulation of need to spend on. That includes transportation systems, water systems, ensuring our pep electric power grid is secure. In the uh, Washington uh, um, uh, area, in, for Washington State, out of the five trillion dollars, the state could qualify for something up to $90 billion to cover all of your backlog of infrastructure projects. Cover big, really ticket items like uh, all the bridge replacements in Seattle, build affordable housing, drive a high-speed rail line from Oregon up through Washington into Canada, uh, and uh, train all of your workers uh, for 21st century jobs. Great paying jobs, too, by the way. So uh, that's just it in a nutshell, and I wanted to thank you for your time, and I'm available to answer questions. Thank Thank you. And thank you. Um, um, let's see, Toyoko, I can see you, so please go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Toyoko Tsukura, who um, reside in uh, District 43rd, and I support the SJM 8006, 8006 Bill National Infrastructure Bank for the following reasons. When we were promoting the Washington state-owned bank, we did a simple calculation to compare the return on the public investment between the Washington Public Work Trust and the publicly owned bank. It showed that the ability to function as a publicly owned bank, that word bank, generates far greater cash flow and the return on the investment without adding the, to the debt. States or municipalities' infrastructure bird, uh, funding is constrained by a caps on the bonding or the cost of issuing bonds. This proposed National Infrastructure Bank can create valuable access to a pool of money for the state and the municipalities in turn, the cash flow and the returns generated by the National Bank would further benefit the country. After the end of the World War II, the National Bank of Japan and the Associated Reconstruction Finance Bank provide, played a significant role in the, re, in the reconstruction of the Japan. This demonstrates the success of this model we need a national infrastructure bank now. Please pass this bill. Thank you so much. And thank you for your testimony. Dale uh, Lahar, go right, go right ahead, please. Okay, it's uh, Lahar is the last name, just to just correct thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll be real fast. Uh, my name is Dale Lahar. I'm a resident of Clark County, Greater Vancouver, uh, Simon Creek area. I'm a retired business executive with the Coca-Cola company. I work both domestically and internationally. Um, I'm, a, as you can tell, a supporter of X006, and I'll be real fast on some things. I just want to repeat the message. That this is an independent public bank authorized by Congress. There'd be no increase to the national debt, no, inc no federal taxes. 
there would be no sunset clause on this. So it would be going for many, 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 many years, and we'll need that. The other thing I want to bring up is that this is, uh, Stan had brought this up earlier. This bank is, is the name, the term bank is a little, is a slight misnomer because the NIB not only would perform the role of finance and fund infrastructure projects, but manage the dispatch and implementation of these projects, ensuring that the right methods, standards, technologies, and economies of scale are applied. They would work very closely with the municipalities and cities, the states, or so whatever. In essence, it would be a one-stop shop for infrastructure, a shop uh, possessing the scope and the scale for $5 trillion to deliver mega projects, regional projects, state and local projects. And this means a lot to me down here in Vancouver because we have not been able to get a cooperation between the two states, Washington and Oregon, to, to, to build or re restore the, um, the High Five Bridge, which is highly congested. So this was one of the big incentives for me to get involved. Finally, one other thing. One of the things that this bank would do is it, 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 it instill institutional know-how. We have lost the ability to do infrastructure in this country. The last major infrastructure project we had was the, um, was the Apollo project, it was the uh, NASA, but also the, uh, was the highway, the interstate highway system. Since then, we haven't really done much, and we're so far behind, and we spend so much money this would be an organ. This institution would help us develop. We would learn from it. We would learn. We'd improve, and it have a, a long term effect upon our country. And it's a strategic piece of legislation in my mind. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Okay, let's just go down the list. Uh, uh, Ellen Brown, please uh, tell us about the bill. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for entertaining this bill. My name is Ellen Brown. I'm chairman of the Public Banking Institute. Uh, I, most of the points have been covered, I think, already. But one I'll go into a little more is how this bank will manage to fund all this stuff without costing Congress anything. Um, Abraham, uh, sorry, Alexander Hamilton was faced with the same problem after the um, Revolutionary War. The country was heavily in debt. And we needed all kinds of infrastructure. So what he did was establish a bank and um, do, well, monetize debt. So the country was heavily in debt. And um, so he turned the debt into bonds, which became the capital for the bank. And then like all banks, you, you could then create 10 times as much uh, bank credit or loans on top of your capital. So, so that's what this bank would do is take a existing federal bonds, federal debt um, held by the private sector, including, for example, pension funds, um, turn those bonds into stock in the bank. And then, um, but the, the, the bond or the stockholder has, um, preferred non-voting stock and they get 2% more than they would have gotten on their bonds and they still technically have the bonds. In other words, when the bond comes due, they can either, they can roll it over or they can get their money back or whatever. And, and that would be rolled over by the National Infrastructure Bank or more bonds would be <laughs> purchased, I guess. I think I'll check. I could probably go into that better than I could. But the point is that... Um, most of our money is not created by the Federal Reserve or by the Treasury. It's created by banks. And so if you form a bank, you can uh, create credit, build the thing. The uh, proceeds of what you built then go back and pay off the loan. So you're not creating inflation. It's not like just pumping money out as the American colonists did when they printed money and tended to print too much money. You're actually creating credit, which is extinguished when the loan is paid off. So it goes back to zero. So that so that's the basic model. I hope I got that right. Uh, Alfec is really the expert in all that. And we clearly have an inflation problem right now. And what the Federal Reserve is doing, or their monetary tools are not going to work because if they raise interest rates, then they raise the costs of producers 
uh, which will drive prices up, not down. And uh, quantitative easing is just a deal with the banks, um, with the big banks. So it's just an asset swap with the big banks. It doesn't get money into the real economy. So really what we have right now is inflation because we have supply change problems and uh, shortages, which were largely triggered by the lockdowns, et cetera. So what we need is more supply. And that's what the infrastructure bank will address is the ability to get more energy out there, better roads and uh, roads and bridges, et cetera, ability to deliver goods and services and produce goods and services. So thank you okay. very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, go right ahead, uh, Carolyn. Hi, my name is Carolyn Barclift. I'm a lifelong resident of Olympia, growing up here, raising my children here in uh, LD22. I want to um, thank Senator Hasegawa for his leadership in advancing SJM 8006 and my own 22nd Legislative District Senator Hunt for his co-sponsorship. Um, I'm, a, I'm a lay person. So um, I'm going to try not to repeat what others have said, but I want to tell you why as a layperson and a taxpayer, this bill really, really interests me. First is that it does not require going back to Congress annually for uh, funding. And we've seen that um, the infrastructure has become a political football. Uh, it will remove the politics from the bank and from our infrastructure funding. Um, another reason uh, that I was really impressed was that it is a permanent bank. Um, I uh, formerly served as a public official. I know the cost of deferred maintenance. It multiplies many times. It costs taxpayers much more than what it should had the um, maintenance or repairs been done in a timely manner. Um, this bill will save taxpayers money. Um, the um, one story I do want to share with you because I think um, it's pertinent is my next door neighbor um, has been residing in the house next door for years. They're a foster family. They raise foster kids. They're fantastic. And during COVID, what we've seen is uh, investors coming in and and causing the prices of homes to explode and take it and buying them for investments. And they just got noticed that their rent's gonna go up to $1,600 from $950 immediately. And then it will go up again in November. I think this is a hidden crisis, but this bill provides for the construction of homes to house our homeless and those who don't have home security. Um, it's I, the timing could not be more perfect, I think, for this. It complements the historic investment that Congress is making, but that historic investment is so insufficient that it needs this kind of a boost to keep going. So um, I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, I'm going. I'm asking you for a due pass recommendation out of committee on SJM 8006 in support of uh, con the congressional bill HR 3339. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Coons, go right ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, Chair Kirby, uh, Ranking Member Vic, and members of the committee, good afternoon. I'm Scott Coons, the Executive Director of the North Central Florida Regional Planning Council in Gainesville, Florida, and the past president of the National Association of Development Organizations. The association is a nonpartisan, not-for-profit organization that provides advocacy, education, research, and training for the nation's 540 regional development organizations. The association and its members promote regional strategies, partnerships, and solutions to strengthen the economic competitiveness and a quality of life across America's local communities. Regional development organizations in the state of Washington are the following nine economic development districts, Economic Development Councils and Councils of Government. The Central Puget Sound Economic Development District, the Columbia Pacific Resource Conservation Economic Development District, the Benton Franklin Council of Governments, the Peninsula Development District, the North Central Washington Economic Development District, the Palouse Economic Development Council, the Cowlitz-Waukeacum Council of Governments, Tri-County Economic Development District, 
and Big Bend Economic Development Council. These public agencies provide a valuable role in intergovernmental collaboration and manage various federal and state programs. Most importantly, they work to solve area-wide issues and to address fundamental building blocks required for competitive and sustainable communities and economies. The most critical of these building blocks is infrastructure. Regional development organizations are governed by a nonpartisan policy board with a majority of local elected officials, along with representatives from the private business community, educational institutions, nonprofit sector, and the general public. Our members work to improve local and regional quality of life by promoting economic and community development through place-based strategies in the areas of infrastructure, economic development, and other sectors. Infrastructure, whether it is transportation, water and sewer facilities, electric utilities, or broadband, is the driving force behind private sector job creation activities and building and maintaining resilient regional economies in the state of Washington and our nation. The nation's $5 trillion infrastructure need requires multiple funding sources and, me and mechanisms. In order to address this need, the Board of Directors of the National Association of Development Organizations recently adopted a resolution in support of the creation of a national infrastructure bank. The bank would complement the recent bipartisan infrastructure bill enacted by Congress. A national infrastructure bank would be an important tool for our members and their local jurisdictions in the Infrastructure Financing Toolkit. Our association supports Senate Joint Memorial 8006, urging Congress to enact House Resolution 3339 legislation to create a national infrastructure bank and respectfully request the committee, this committee to pass the joint memorial. Thank you for your time and consideration of this important initiative for the future of Washington and our nation. And thank you very much for your testimony. Um, Okay, that is everyone on the list who wishes to testify. There were um, like 250 people signed in uh, not wishing to testify. Um, and that, this, that worked out good. And we don't like it when it's the other way around. Um, so um, with that, um, we will uh, we'll see all three of these bills again on Wednesday when we do our, our last meeting um, uh, to consider uh, uh, Senate bills. Uh, and uh, we'll see, you know, where we are on them at, at that time. Thank you, everyone, for, um, for everything. And um, we, let's see, there being no further business to come before the committee, we are adjourned 15 minutes early. <laughs>